Hey, Tom from Ignite Digi here. Just want to talk through the RS4 Pro using the DJI Transmission, Focus Pro system, and of course, our new control deck. This video is recorded in August 2024. We're expecting functionality will change over time as DJI update firmware, and also we add functionality to control deck. So let's get started. So I've got the RS4 Pro here. This is also applicable to the RS3 Pro. So I've got the red Komodo OG. I've got our Keystone cage. Down the side here, I've got the LiDAR hub, which is the current one, uh, not the new one that they teased with the RS4 Pro. I've got the Focus Pro LiDAR up here, and I've got one Focus Pro motor here, one Focus Pro, Pro motor here, which is on Iris. And then down underneath, you'll find we've got the DJI transmission, trans, video transmitter, as they call it. So um, the LiDAR hub is obviously feeding all of the different devices. Then out the back, what we've got is we're feeding a V-lock on the tilt to ring and we're feeding that up into our power breakout. The power breakout is then going two pin out to the camera, two pin out to the LiDAR hub. So we modified one of these LiDAR hubs to have a two pin rather than a D-tap for its power source. Up the front, we've got the beautiful uh, Atlas Mercury anamorphic. So 36 mil, um, these are really beautiful lenses and thanks to Luke Marriott for loaning them to us for this video. Next up, we've got the DJI Focus Pro hand unit here and the Hybrite monitor bracket, which has just come onto the market. And of course the Hybrite monitor. Then over here, got the control deck. Got our, this is our complete kit with the monitor mounts and I've got the other DJI Hybrite here. And on the back of that one, I've got the expansion plate, which has the six pin and the SDI and HDMI. For those who've got the Focus Pro motors, you will have this D-tap to USB-C cable. Um, DJI do give you a warning about this cable, but I'm just gonna reiterate that this is a dangerous cable. It delivers 11 to 17 volts to USB-C. So um, use with caution. Um, my recommendation would be if your motors are already powered from another source, hide this cable. Do not use this cable. If you are sure that you're not drawing power from somewhere else, um, then you can use this cable. DJI intended this for sort of handheld setups where you're running a DTAP into the motors. Um, once you get into the gimbal, the cabling becomes a bit more complex and you just need to be thinking about the power, the, the way the power is routing, um, because otherwise you risk putting power, putting 17 volts back into your gimbal and you will fry the, the board in here. Or if you're using the hand grip, um, you need to power the motors from the hand grip. Um, don't power from here and then feed the hand grip. You will smoke the hand grip. I can attest to that. The LiDAR hub here has a lot going on, so I just want to explain that. First up, we're going to this dual cable that runs around to the transmitter, and that's giving you six pin here and the USB-C here. So that's power and control to and from the transmitter. Next up, I'm gonna to go to the bottom one down here, and that is what we've modified to two pin. So standard would be a D-tap, but we've modified to two pin, and that's powering off the power breakout. So that's putting power into the hub and then feeding out to all the different devices. Next up, around the front, we've got two cables coming out, one of which is the dual USB-C going to the LiDAR. So um, it makes you've gotta make sure this is around the right way. You can plug it in the wrong way. It doesn't damage it, but it just won't work. And then last is the other USB-C here, which is going to the first of the Focus Pro motors. And I've got this into the Focus motor um, because this is what the LiDAR is controlling. So first feed into the Focus motor that you're gonna be using with the LiDAR, and then this USB-C is then feeding out to the second motor over here. The last cable coming out of the uh, hub is a separate cable that goes into the USB socket and that runs around and that's a DJI USB-C and that runs into the transmission port of the RS3 or uh, Pro or RS4 Pro. One cable I forgot to mention earlier, the run stop cables come out of the back port on the RS4 Pro or the top USB-C port on the RS3 Pro. So that's running around here to the nine pin EXT for the Komodo. So that will enable us run stop, not on the hand unit, but um, on the control deck. In terms of control here on the control deck, I've got pan, tilt, 
I've got roll, I've got roll trim and all the usual things. I've got dead band smoothing, I've got shake mode, all of the usual operators controls that the control deck enables. I have in the menu, I have fizz turned off because we're, we don't want to control the fizz in this setup. We want the first AC to have control. DJI transmission allows two of these monitors to be control monitors. So I've got this set up as control monitor A on the control deck setup and control monitor B for the focus setup here. So you can, that's in the connection settings and you can choose which one here and then link to the transmitter. Both monitors, because they are control monitors, will get the LiDAR feed. So the LiDAR feed, the overlay and the controls for setting up. So obviously I've got the control deck set up more for an operator, so they're not gonna be negotiating these settings. Um, but if you wanted the operator to have that, you can enable those things um, here. So that's the LiDAR waveform and the distance. You can also enable the picture in picture on both. So because this is an operator's monitor, we're gonna turn all of that stuff off. So that's nice and clean. So then over here on the first AC monitor, I've got the picture in picture, which is the LiDAR feed. So you can see the color representation of focus. And then we've got the LiDAR and then the distance. So you can see up here also, we've got a live feed of the LiDAR readout as well. So as my hand moves in front, I've got AMF on at the moment. So you can see the wheel on the Focus Pro unit is going crazy as I'm putting my hand up. So then you can manually override that so you can stop it from jumping around or you can just let it go. One of the more confusing aspects of the DJI Focus Pro and DJI transmission systems is their, the way that they work together or don't. So currently in this setup, obviously I've got video and the LiDAR feed and everything coming through transmission and that's gonna be you know super long range, a couple of kilometers. Um, but the actual control of the motors is going from this hand unit with a 2.4 gigahertz link to the focus motor and then linking through from the focus motor to the iris motor. So this range is only like 100 meters to 150 meters depending on your region and that's um, obviously sets up a weird limitation where you might have video and LiDAR feed but you won't have focus and iris control. We've been lobbying DJI for the last few months um, because we believe that with this these two systems that it can work. Obviously this hand unit can control the 4D, so through this bracket or through our control link, you can do control of the 4D via transmission for focus, iris and zoom. So it is possible to do focus, iris and zoom through transmission, um, it just hasn't been coded yet. So it's our strong feeling that you know the next step is that this will communicate via this rather than just um, via its internal link. So fingers crossed that happens because then you will have um, you know, the holy grail, which is focus our zoom, um, video and gimbal control all via transmission and um, you'll be able to do full three channel control via the control deck or turn that off and allow your first AC to have all of that control as well. Here on the focus pro hand unit, um, we've obviously got the iris slider, we've got the focus knob and then we've got the zoom rocker. I don't have a zoom motor, so this is doing nothing. The record button currently only works with the Inspire 3 or the Ronin 4D via the transmission monitor. So in this setup, we can't actually do run stop. The only spot we can do run stop is here on the control deck. So that is able to trigger the Komodo. So ignore this button for now in this setup. The other buttons, M and A slash B. So M enables and disables the autofocus or AMF in this case. So that's the automated manual focus. And then back to MF. And then A and B is so you can set marks. But they're gonna get confused because I've flipped the motor and so uh, it doesn't know where it is. I expect DJI will fix this issue on the next firmware. The last button is on the back here and that's just, you hot press and hold that to adjust the strength of the motor in here. So the first thing you want to do on the um, RS3 and RS4 is switch on the side down to FPV and then you want to go touch the FPV and then scroll across to custom and then in custom, that's top little bit, you want to turn off each of these and then the idea is that you have no follow mode. 
So that way the operator carrying the gimbal or if it's on a car or something, it's never gonna input um, anything from this. It'll only be from the control deck. So obviously if you do wanna have some controller aspects so that you know maybe this cable doesn't snag, then you can enable that and adjust the setting for that here. So let's say we want it on pan and then we go back and we change it to medium. So now there'll be a, a window and a dead band at which it'll start to do. So that will stop this ever being able to twist up fully unless you do it from the joystick. One feature worth noting is the mode toggle here. So a long hold on the far right button. So what will that will do is it will switch remotely between pan, tilt, follow and whatever the third position is set to. So that's custom, FPV, portrait or 360 roll. In our case, we've got it set to custom. The other setting you wanna check is the dial setting. So you wanna swipe up and then you wanna go dial functions. Obviously you can control this focus motor via that dial, but the thing is then you've got two inputs. So you've got the first AC's input via the focus pro hand unit, which is absolute. And then you've got the front here, which is um, rate based. So that'll sort of interfere with each other. So it's better if you just make it like tilt or something like that. The last setup here is the single operator where you wanna control your own fizz um, with the RS3 or RS4 Pro. This is where some of the limitations with DJI Transmission and Focus Pro ecosystems start to become apparent. So via DJI Transmission, we can only control one motor and also that motor is now controlled rate-based. So what's the difference between absolute and rate-based? Absolute is where you send a signal to say, go to this position. Say, you know, the focus motor does zero to 999. And you know, that's from one end to the other end. So we obviously know we have end stops here on our focus wheel and we, we have values, you know, one end to one end. So this is absolute, but then once it goes into DJI transmission, we've got to talk rate-based. So rate-based is move this direction at this speed. So it doesn't have end stops as such. It's more, um, the, and the reason DJI have used this is because of things like this, this dial on the front, you know, that is, that is a rate based dial because it doesn't have end stops. So you can control the whole lens focus system via that. But you know, for the Inspire 3 and the 4D, we wanted to have the hard stops because like the Focus Pro hand unit, you have hard stops because hard stops work and it's absolute based by the Inspire 3 and the 4D. So we tossed up whether to make this rate based or absolute based system and we decided on absolute, um, but that does throw some limitations when you use this setup. First limitation, you can only control one motor. Um, even though I have two Focus Pro motors here and they're linked and everything should in theory work, you know, I should be able to control Iris, I can't because the, um, it's not coded into the DJI transmission system. So I've only got focus um, at the moment, so I can only control whichever motor is set to focus. Um, we've done some firmware on our end and we've enabled you to flip it to zoom. So if you wanted to put the focus motor or what you've set as the focus motor onto a zoom, you could have the operator control that and then you could have other motors which are powered separately, not connected to that single motor. Um, you could then use with the Focus Pro hand unit via the 2.4 gigahertz. So you could have a situation where, um, you know, you wanted the um, iris or the zoom or something to be controlled by the operator separately to the focus, which is controlled by the first AC. So there's sort of a blend to be had. So um, the way around or the way to use this focus system in a usable way is to adjust the dial speed settings on the back of the gimbal and I'll show you how to do that. So first thing to do is swipe up, make sure your dial is set to focus motor and then you want to go to dial settings and you can adjust the speed and you can also flip it. So if you want the control on the control deck to be the opposite way in terms of focus, um, or zoom, you can do it there, and you can adjust this dial speed. So essentially dial speed is changing the, um, uh, is gonna change how much the movement of the wheel on the control deck will then adjust on the lens. So 
you can find that sort of happy point where you can still reach the limits of the lens. So now I've reached the limits of the, of the lens within the range of this focus wheel. It gets a little bit confusing, um, but if you have any questions, reach out. But basically, you just wanna play around with dial speed here until you've got it, you know, pretty much I've got it. I can turn that down a little bit more now and I'll still be able to get yeah, so I can get the full range of that now. So I do have focus control, but I don't have iris. So where you'll need to be careful is if you have this set up and then you turn the Focus Pro hand unit, you'll basically have dual inputs into these. Um, so you need to be careful in those situations and um, either separate the motors, so power them separately so that they can't communicate to each other via USB-C. And then you could have one motor here and then the other motors on the hand unit. So the other option is to turn the fizz control off and give it all to the first AC by the hand unit. And that is what the previous setup um, was that I showed you. On the control deck setup page, we have flow diagrams that will show you the signal and power um, setups for each of these rigs. So check them out. And if you have any other questions, please reach out.